Hey Nancy Drew fans, we're back for book 40, The Moonstone Castle Mystery. This book begins with Nancy opening a package she's just received in the mail. Inside there's a beautiful moonstone and an unsigned cryptic note that tells her she'll need the stone for luck. Nancy immediately suspects this is connected to a new case that she and her father have been working on. A Mr. and Mrs. Horton have been missionaries in Africa for the last many years and have just returned home to find that their granddaughter Jodine, an heiress to a fortune, is missing. That same night, Nancy's awoken by shouting in a suspenseful scene that makes great use of a chapter ending. The young sleuth jumped out of bed and ran to a window. Just then, the sound of a shot rang out through the still night. Nancy pulled on her robe and slippers. She dashed to her father's room. To her astonishment, the door was open and he was not there. With a quaking heart, Nancy flew down the front stairway, calling, Dad! Dad! There was no answer. Nancy, Bess, and George soon head to a town called Deep River in Moonstone Valley to investigate Jardine's disappearance. Deep River is a quaint old town with a diner, a local gossip named Mrs. Hempstead, and good-natured, if a bit bumbling, police. Inexplicably, there's also a large castle with a moat and drawbridge on the outskirts of town. This store is pretty action-packed. Nancy's convertible is stolen, there's a five-foot snake, an old man who's a key witness in the mystery is kidnapped from the hospital, and Nancy is knocked out and imprisoned in the castle. Ned, Bird, and Dave soon come to be reinforcements, and notably, Ned kisses Nancy when he sees her, the first time that they've shared a kiss in any of the books. In one exciting scene, the whole gang is on a river cruise at night when a driverless motorboat comes barreling towards them. Bert and Dave jump in to pilot the out-of-control boat and are promptly arrested for stealing it. We have no proof, Nancy replied, but also you have no proof we stole the boat. The officer looked searchingly at her. You sound like a lawyer. Probably I've learned that from my father. He's Carson Drew of River Heights, an attorney. Suddenly the officer's face broke into a wide grin. Carson Drew? Everybody knows him. So you're his daughter? Why didn't you tell the river police that in the first place? Nancy did not answer. She merely smiled, and the officer said with a wink, Case dismissed. The supposedly haunted castle figures heavily into the story and several of the most exciting scenes. When Nancy tracks her convertible to the castle estate, the girls are almost crushed by a malfunctioning drawbridge. They're pretty isolated, so Nancy takes matters into her own hands, climbing the castle wall, hanging on some vines, and repairing the chain and getting it back into the cogwheel. George and Bess bicker constantly, making for plenty of making fun of Bess moments, like this one that happens right after the drawbridge. Nancy, don't give me a scare like that again, Bess begged. Her cousin looked at her disdainfully. You'd think it was Nancy's fault. We're lucky to be alive, thanks to her. Bess apologized, saying she had not meant to imply Nancy was a poor driver. To forestall an argument, Nancy said, What on earth made the bridge rise? A picnic with some local townsfolk features the only food in the book, but it's a real feast. There are platters of snacks, steaks, potato chips, several kinds of salads, vanilla ice cream topped with fresh fruit, and cake. Nancy ends up solving one of her biggest cases yet, reuniting a family, saving several elderly people that were being swindled and tortured, and putting away some serious criminals that have actual murders on their rap sheets. But she refuses a reward and is already thinking about her next mystery, the clue of the whistling bagpipes. <laughs> 